On Sunday, June 18th, a submarine joyride to view the wreck of the Titanic came to an unexpected and sad end. I haven't found them yet, but they're hearing banging now. I think they're just going to assume they're all going to die together. Yeah? Yeah. Being trapped in a box is... That's one of the worst ways to go. Against the hubris that sent that ship to its doom is exactly the same thing that sent those people at that sub to their fate. It's a wake-up call for us. But what exactly happened to Ocean Gate's Titan submersible in the depths of the ocean? What were the warning signs that were ignored and led to this tragedy? And what does the term implosion exactly mean compared to explosion? And what does a black hole have in common with the Titan sub? Join us on this exciting exploration as we unravel the truth behind the Titan sub incident and take a closer look at the implosions. Exactly one hour and 45 minutes after the Titan submarine began its 12,500 foot descent off the coast of Newfoundland, the submersible lost communication with the Polar Prince, the expedition ship at the surface. After the submarine's crew of five did not surface on schedule, a massive international search and rescue operation was launched to find the missing submersible. A desperate race against time to save five people trapped somewhere beneath the ocean surface. Multinational search coalition scours the Atlantic Ocean. Time is running out. The world held its breath as the vessel's air supply slowly dwindled until it was discovered that it was only a short time after the Titan lost contact with the surface it imploded. But what does that really mean? Well, at the ocean's surface, atmospheric pressure is about 14.7 pounds per square inch, but at the depth of the wreck of the Titanic, that pressure rises to about 6,000 pounds per square inch, which is the equivalent to being under the weight of the Eiffel Tower. To put this into perspective, a person can dive up to 30 feet without scuba gear. At this point, the person would feel a pressure of about 30 pounds on every inch of their body. Now, imagine being 400 times deeper underwater. The pressure differential, or the difference between the external pressure and the internal pressure of the sub, becomes extreme at those depths. But wasn't the Titan supposedly designed for this? Well, before this expedition, the submersible had already successfully descended to the wreck of the Titanic on 13 out of 90 previous dives. While these numbers aren't perfect, they showed that the sub was at least structurally stable enough to reach a depth of 13,000 feet. But this time, something went terribly wrong. At around 5,600 feet below the ocean's surface, the Titan suffered an electrical failure. With no propulsion, the sub slowly sank to the depths of the ocean, all while the external pressure continued to build rapidly around the Titan. Tragically, during the time it took the sub to freefall about 3,000 feet with its porthole facing straight down, the crew was completely aware of what was happening, piled on top of each other in total darkness, waiting to meet their inescapable fate. At around 9,000 feet, the sub's walls gave out under enormous water pressure. At that depth, the smallest crack in the submersible's hull could have caused the pressure to smash the two ends of the sub's hull together in about one millisecond, heating the air in the sub to around the temperature of the sun as the walls of the submarine instantly collapsed at an incredible speed. Now, many critics think the implosion could have been avoided. You know, this is a mature art, and many people in the community were very concerned about this sub. And a number of the top players in the, in the uh, deep submergence engineering community even wrote letters to the company. There are only 10 submersible vehicles in the world with a maximum operating depth or crush depth of 12,000 feet or deeper, and every one of those vessels is certified by regulatory bodies that guarantee the safety of the submersible at extreme depths except the Titan. Before Ocean Gate, nobody had ever made a submersible with a carbon fiber hull. At those depths, carbon fiber has been known to collapse under the immense water pressure. But Ocean Gate's CEO decided to go ahead with the project anyway, claiming that innovation trumps safety. I'd like to be remembered as an innovator. You're remembered for the rules you break. Usually, the hull of these submersibles is constructed with high strength steel or titanium which have been tried and tested at extreme depths for decades. Because the behavior of metallic hulls is much more predictable at those depths, 
These materials are the industry standard for deep dives. Sadly, innovation ended up taking the lives of five people. OceanGate CEO Stockton Rush, British Pakistani businessman Shazada Dawood and his 19-year-old son Suleiman, French explorer Paul-Henri Nargelet, and British billionaire explorer Hamish Harding, who last year was one of six crew members who traveled to outer space aboard a rocket launched by Jeff Bezos' space exploration firm Blue Origin. According to a New York Times report, the company's engineering team was about to hand over the craft, named Titan, to a new crew who would be responsible for ensuring the safety of its future passengers. But experts inside and outside the company were beginning to sound alarms. OceanGate's Director of Marine Operations, David Lockridge, started working on a report around that time, according to court documents, ultimately producing a scathing document in which he said the craft needed more testing and stressed the potential dangers to passengers of the Titan as the submersible reached extreme depths. Two months later, OceanGate faced similarly dire calls from more than three dozen people, industry leaders, deep sea explorers, and oceanographers who warned in a letter to its chief executive Stockton Rush that the company's experimental approach and its decision to forego a traditional assessment could lead to potentially catastrophic problems with the Titanic mission. The critiques from Mr. Lockridge and the experts who signed the 2018 letter to Mr. Rush were focused in part on what they characterized as Mr. Rush's refusal to have the Titan inspected and certified by one of the leading agencies that do such work. Mr. Lockridge reported in court records that he had urged the company to do so, but that he had been told that OceanGate was unwilling to pay for such an assessment. In the documents, Mr. Lockridge reported learning that the viewport that lets passengers see outside the craft was only certified to work in depths of up to 1,300 meters. That is far less than would be necessary for trips to the Titanic, which is nearly 4,000 meters below the ocean surface. Now, this was not the first submersible incident involving a catastrophic implosion. In 1963, a nuclear-powered attack submarine developed during the Cold War named the USS Thresher was met with a similar fate as the Titan. The sub was designed to dive up to 2,000 feet and had been successfully tested at 1,300 feet. Halfway through one of its tests, the Thresher lost contact with the surface. It was later found that an electrical failure had caused this submarine to sink. At about 2,400 feet, the pressure hull imploded in about 2 milliseconds, taking the lives of the 129-man crew aboard the USS Thresher. The tragic end of the Titan and the USS Thresher are prime examples of how one tiny flaw in an otherwise perfectly designed system can end in disaster. And this is true for all kinds of extreme expeditions and explorations. In an implosion, the external pressure is higher than the internal pressure of a system where the barrier between the inside and outside can't hold the pressure difference and causes the system to collapse on itself instantly. In an explosion, the exact opposite happens. Let's take a regular explosive as an example. When an explosive detonates, the fuel inside it quickly heats up and expands, creating a pressure differential with the surrounding environment. When that difference becomes large enough, the explosive's container can no longer hold the fuel, and the contents break the container and expand rapidly and violently into the environment. That's an explosion. While explosions can happen for many reasons, such as chemical reactions or the failure of a pressurized system, the end result is always the same, a rapid, violent release of energy in a confined space, which results in a sudden increase in pressure. And as we know, the shockwaves produced by an explosion can be catastrophic. Think back to the tragic failure of the Space Shuttle Challenger in 1986 which exploded only 73 seconds after liftoff because of a ceiling defect in one of its solid rocket boosters. We have a report from the flight dynamics officer that the vehicle has exploded. Or even to the more recent explosions of several of SpaceX's Starship rockets. History is full of examples like these, and in every single one, a small defect triggered a massive accident, usually in the initial phases of the launch. Luckily, once a vessel actually reaches outer space, a catastrophic failure is much less likely. 
Because space is a vacuum, meaning there's no external pressure being exerted on a spaceship, the only way a spaceship can explode in space is if the internal pressure of the spacecraft somehow becomes so great that it can no longer be contained inside the vessel. On the other hand, the implosion of a spaceship would be physically impossible. Because an implosion happens as a result of external pressure crushing an object with less internal pressure, an implosion can't happen in a vacuum with no air pressure. Now, this doesn't mean that implosions don't happen in space. But where do they take place? Well, imagine a star that's about 20 times the size of the sun. Throughout the life of that star, the outward pressure exerted by the star's radiation is opposed by the gravity of the star's mass. For most of that star's life, these two forces are in perfect balance. But eventually, the star's fuel begins to run out, and it no longer exerts outward pressure. When this happens, the force of gravity gains the upper hand and begins to squeeze the star's core harder and harder until, just like the Titan's hull, the star collapses in a fraction of a second, creating a massive implosion. When the star's outer layers clash at the star's core, the incredible force of the implosion causes the star's outer layers to rebound into space, creating a supernova explosion. If a star's core is massive enough, its enormous energy can create one of the most spectacular phenomena in the universe, a black hole. If the core is less dense, the supernova explosion leaves behind a ball of matter in which the electrons and protons in the star's core fuse together to form one of the densest known objects in the universe, a neutron star. In the words of Neil deGrasse Tyson, to achieve the density of a neutron star at home, simply cram a herd of 50 million elephants into the volume of a thimble. Comment your thoughts below. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications to join us on our next video.